And officially, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this uh, ACAP community information session for November 3rd, 2021. I'm Jason Parent, the Executive Director at the Aroostook County Action Program, and it's a pleasure to welcome you all into this information session. Uh, what we wanted to do and have done in the past couple of information sessions is to really help the community prepare itself for the coming winter season. We realize that our programs, many of them are offered, or most of them, I should say, are offered year round. Um, but it's this time of year when more folks are seemingly in need of assistance as it relates to things like heating assistance or housing um, as individuals uh, want to stay warm and safe during the winter months. So over the years, we have done these community information sessions uh, with faith-based community, municipalities, other nonprofit organizations, um, and partners that we work with on a regular basis to help them understand how they can better access the services that we offer and help their community members uh, and the individuals that they serve better access our services. Given the additional breadth and scope of services that we are now offering as an agency, uh, we have expanded this session to include some other critical programs uh, that are available as a result of the, the country's response to the pandemic that are available right here in Aroostook County. Uh, I will say that this session is not comprehensive of all ACAP programs. For example, we don't necessarily touch on ACAP's prevention programs. Um, we have over 40 programs in this agency, um, and uh, we are proud of all of those programs, but this information session is more geared toward and focused on those services that provide emergency support for basic needs, if you will. Uh, so with that, we will get underway, and uh, the first part of the session is to share with you uh, just some brief overview items of what's to come with our agency, just things to be looking out for. And so with that, I wanted to share with the group, as many of you in this group are interested in this, that uh, Aroostook County's next community assessment uh, as a community action agency, we are responsible for every three years doing a comprehensive community assessment. Our next such assessment results will be made available to the public prior to the end of this year. It will be presented the results of the community assessment that was conducted over the spring, summer, and early fall will be presented to our board of directors first um, later this month. Uh, and then those will be released publicly uh, by the month of December or within the month of December. So be on the lookout for those. It really helps us to identify and target uh, the areas that we as a community action agency need to focus on to be responsive to the needs of our community. That uh, community assessment will advise our next strategic plan. So a strategic planning process will commence once we receive and formally accept that community assessment and those results, which will help us determine uh, several uh, areas for us to focus our attention on in the coming three-year cycle. So that process is to begin shortly, and we should have a new strategic plan by spring of next year that we will share with the community. Uh, in addition to that, I'm very happy to announce that um, 2022 is the 50th anniversary of the Aroostook County Action Program. It marks the year uh, back in 1972 when the St. John Valley Community Action Council and the then Central Aroostook um, Community Action Agency merged to form what is present day ACAP. So we will be marking that occasion throughout uh, 2022 and hopefully we'll have many of you join us for some of the celebrations and milestone achievements along the way. So we wanted to share that those pieces of information with you. In addition, we also uh, wanted to share with you that we are diligently working on uh, this facility, which is one Edgemont Drive, which is now the location for not only our administrative headquarters here at ACAP as we have grown with some of the pandemic era programs such as rental assistance and housing supports and the like. Um, and so our administrative offices are located in this facility for the time being, as well as the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center and our prevention programs. Um, the intent is over the next couple of years in partnership with Maine Housing, we will be working to trans transition this facility into a 14 unit uh, studio and one bedroom apartment units supportive housing complex, which will include on the ground level the Hope and Prosperity Wellness Center, which is currently at that location, uh, but there will be some modifications obviously made to this building. So that's a project that we will be working on to address uh, the housing shortage or do our part in part to address the housing shortage here in Aroostook County over the next couple of years. So we do hope for a, um, a, an opening of this facility at some point in 2023. 
Beyond that, we wanted to share with you the good news that we have shared with the community in the last couple of weeks that it does appear that our funding request uh, for a direct, congressionally directed spending uh, allocation to uh, develop a mobile service unit for Roostick County uh, will be going before the full House and Senate, uh, thanks to the uh, sponsorship of Senator Susan Collins and Senator Angus King. Uh, should that be finalized and awarded, we will be working with the community to develop what the mobile service unit will look like, but it'll essentially allow us to take our programs and working in partnership with other programs, those services directly into some of the more remote communities in Aroostook County where we don't presently have an office um, location or a service location to be able to serve individuals directly through. So we are excited about this. It will be um, an RV style unit uh, that will be, uh, that will be uh, specially built to accommodate uh, the services that we would be able to provide comprehensively to people in rural communities in Aroostook County. Next, I will turn it over to our Chief Operating Officer, Jamie Chandler, who will talk to you about the new approaches that we are taking here at ACAP as it relates to our concept of one ACAP. Jamie? Thanks, Jason. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is our third session, and um, so we should have all of the kinks ironed out for our presentation. So uh, thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I wanted to talk to you all just about uh, a a, a shift in the way that we are delivering our services here at ACAP. Uh, first and foremost, we are working on developing what we're calling a universal intake process. And essentially what that means is that uh, we have one agency database and information when you come in for services uh, to receive services here at the agency, your information will be entered into that database. Uh, basic demographic information, and um, essentially uh, what that will allow us the ability to do is uh, look at what other programs within the agency that you may be eligible for. And um, essentially what will happen is your information will be entered into the system when you meet with staff, with program staff for the particular program that, that you are meeting with them uh, to, to discuss they may be able to get you directly connected through our system uh, to other programs that you might be eligible for. Uh, so so it's, a, it's a way to uh, make referrals within our ACAP programs more seamless and easier for you. The other really neat thing about this uh, opportunity that we have with this database is that we can collect information. So if you have proof, for example, or a driver's license that is required for one program, and we scan a copy of that into our database, it's available so that other programs, if they need that piece of information for your eligibility for that particular program, you wouldn't have to present that date, that driver's license again. So, um, so, so some unique, some unique components to that. Uh, one thing we do want to let folks know is that, uh, especially if you're used to coming in for, let's say, a half hour appointment, perhaps your appointment might be a little bit longer because we are able to get you connected with other programs. We may be able to provide you services for multiple programs at that one visit. So um, just be aware that perhaps uh, if, if your time allows, we may be able to get you connected to multiple services in the same day. Additionally, we are working uh, really closely cross collaboratively and across programs. We've Im implemented navigators it, across our agency to help support individuals who need to get connected to other services. One of the, uh, one of the components that we discovered throughout the pandemic was that we had a number of people who were coming to ACAP for the first time needing services. They had never needed uh, services from us before. And so having access to a navigation team that can help get information, gather information from our customers and get them connected to the services that will best meet their needs is extremely, is extremely beneficial. And so our staff are working with the navigators and across programs to serve you uh, seamlessly and as, as easily as we can. Uh, we're also working together in our outreach efforts. So uh, we have staff that they're, uh, Jason mentioned our prevention programs. We have a number of, of our programs that are out in the community doing, doing a, 
a great amount of work, um, but we do offer 40, 40 programs. And so um, during one of our summer events, it was discovered that there were a lot of questions around our heating assistance program at a prevention event. And we didn't have the information necessary to answer a lot of the questions. And so uh, we are, are thinking a lot differently about how we as an organization engage with the community and making sure that we have access to information and staff to, to help answer those questions when we are out and about within the community. Uh, we also are working across programs that serve similar customers. So uh, if you are, uh, for example, a, an individual who has children under the age of five, we may ask you questions about if you have access to high quality childcare or if you are enrolled in our uh, women, infants and children's food and nutrition program. And if you're not, we may work with you to get you connected to those programs if you're so interested. So, uh, so a lot of collaboration is happening to uh, make sure that you are are connected to, to services so that we can serve you in a very comprehensive way. And essentially what that does is it leads to improved outcomes for the customers that we serve, which is ultimately the, the goal that we are all working towards is to, is to make sure that um, individuals who are, who are accessing our services are able to uh, make their lives better. And so uh, we are able to do that by providing these comprehensive services to you. So uh, Jason, that's just a small introduction to our 1A cap and comprehensive service delivery, and I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Jamie. Hopefully, um, those of you who are, are joining us today will, will sort of understand that as we talk through a number of different programs, which we're going to begin with now shortly. Uh, just a quick note, we're able to give you a very high level overview, but we're trying to give you the pertinent information in terms of how people connect with our programs, can connect with our programs, and perhaps qualify for our programs or better understand how they may qualify for our programs in this session. So we understand that not all of your questions may be answered by what we share, but we do want to answer your questions, and there's two ways that you can do that. One, we have reserved an open question and answer period at the end of today's session, where we'll be able to certainly have you uh, feed those comments in directly to us verbally, unmute yourself and, and do that that way. In the meantime, if you have questions on specific programs and don't want to lose those, don't want to forget those, and we can try to have the presenter sort of uh, provide you with the answer while they're speaking, I encourage you to use the chat feature um, in today's um, uh, Zoom session and post your question there so that we can address it to the individual who will be speaking at that given time or go back to them um, as necessary to um, ensure that your question is answered because we do want to get you the information that you need to be able to help connect people to our programs today. And so we're going to begin that process of doing an overview of programs and we'll begin with one that's very top of mind today and that's with uh, Shannon Hill who will be presenting now on our uh, heating assistance and, uh, and, and related uh, programs. So Shannon, over to you. Thanks, Jason. So yeah, definitely um, on top of our minds today, especially I had to get out the scraper on my windshield this morning. So I think heating is first and foremost um, going to be our concern from here on out. Um, so I'm here today. I'm going to talk about the home energy assistance program. We call it HEAT. Um, this is an in income-based program to help supplement your heating costs. You know, as much as we would love to be able to cover the entire cost, uh, we're not always able to do that. So this program is just meant to help supplement those heating costs. This benefit can be used for whatever they use to heat their home, whether it's oil or caro, propane, wood, pellets, um, or if they have electric heat. Um, so on the Screen. We're going to show the guidelines for the program. Um, again, this year, the guidelines have expanded to allow more individuals to um, be eligible in the program. So if you know of anybody in the past that was denied because they were literally uh, a couple dollars short from hitting that guideline, definitely encourage them to call in this season because more than likely um, they'll be eligible this time around. Also new this year is the one month income requirement. In the past, um, they have gone back three months of income. Um, so this year uh, is one month or 30 days um, that you have to show proof of income for. And that's the income 
that we will use to base your eligibility on. So who should apply for this? Um, honestly, everyone, homeowners, renters, um, you know, especially seniors, households with children under the age of two or individuals at the risk of hypothermia. Um, definitely give us a call. Um, if you are a standing client, then every year your heating assistance appointment is made and you automatically get that letter. Um, but definitely anybody out there know of anyone that has not applied in the past, please give them our number and have them give us a call and we would love to get them in. We are doing our very best right now to get all those new individuals in early this season. Um, and the number to call here for an appointment is 768-3053. So this year uh, we are offering both uh, phone and in-person interviews. So primarily most are phone interviews, but if the individual would like to come in and do a face-to-face, -face, we would love and encourage them to do that as well. Um, we were fortunate enough, um, the entire state was this fall, we received great news. Um, there was some extra money and that was put towards the fuel assistance program. So everyone got an extra supplemental payment um, that applied last year. So if they applied last year, they got the same exact benefit that they received last year in October of this year. So that is wonderful that those individuals will be able to start the heating system, heating season off this year um, with something already in their tank to, to go and not have to worry about that. Um, because of that, that has made our ESIP, which is our Energy Crisis Intervention Program, uh, which started November 1st, um, may is taking the burden off that a little bit right now. Um, I suspect that will change, but for right now, it, it seems as though everyone is doing good and, and they've got some heat and fuel in the tank. So we love hearing that. Um, so lastly, I'd just like to say that we are looking forward to November 18th. This is gonna be our annual Keep me warm and safe telephone. Um, this event is so important to us. Um, individuals that for whatever reason do not qualify for HEAP or ESIP, um, these donation dollars help bridge that gap to ensure that everyone is staying warm and safe uh, this winter in their home. So that's all I got. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Shannon. Again, folks, if you have any questions on this, please, again, feel free to post them in the chat room, or we can certainly take questions at the end of this session. We're going to move on now to um, programs related, and these are new programs, pandemic era related programs uh, re related to rental and utility assistance. And for that, we are going to uh, transition to Priscilla Steves, who uh, oversees our rental assistance program. So Priscilla, it is yours. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Priscilla. I work in the um, rental assistance program. We are a income based program and we help any and all renters that qualify. Um, they can apply either over the phone or on the internet. With this program, we do assist with back rent current rent and future rent, along with electricity, water, sewer, trash, and internet. Um, you're up to 18, um, they qualify for up to 18 units um, until they are no longer eligible for the program. Um, if this program has changed its rules, so it's no longer, um, the uh, applicants no longer need to be impacted by COVID as long as they meet the income eligibility guidelines. The payments normally go to the landlord. However, if the landlord feels that they do not want to participate in this program, we can send the, um, the money right straight to the tenant as long as they provide us with a receipt afterwards. Um, the guidelines in our, in our program, a, a household of just one tenant 
as long as their income is less than 3,700, I'm sorry, yeah, 37,700, they are eligible for this program. Right now, it looks like we are close to 4,500 tenants that is using our program. And we are staying currently right up to date with um, our guidelines. So um, we're hoping to speed up the process a little, even though I do know that sometimes the landlords do get impatient for waiting, but we are working as fast as we possibly can. We also help with emergency fuel if they are a, um, a renter at this time. And Priscilla, thank you. We did have a question that was asked in the chat and uh, one of your colleagues here at ACAP, Kylie Pelletier, assisted with that. You had mentioned that there were 18, it was available for 18 units and by units you did mean months, correct? Well, uh, yes and no. Um, housing is using the name units, although it does qualify as months. It just means that if somebody needs their rent paid in January, February, and March, and they needed their electric paid in December, that just means that we are using four units there because they had to use December for something other than rent. If they have rent and utilities in the same month, that is one unit. But if they are in different months, then it would be two. So we have to be on our toes for that as well. Great. Thank you for that clarification. Much appreciated. And thank you for uh, your presentation on that program. Again, um, our team is available to answer any questions beyond this session as well. If you have any questions, Priscilla can certainly take calls. Um, if you think of anything else in the course of this session, please don't hesitate to post it or talk about it when we are uh, inquire uh, verbally when we're in that portion of the presentation. We are now going to move on to programs that provide food assistance specifically for families. Um, and our, the supervisor of our WIC program, Rochelle Roy, is going to do an overview of those. So Rochelle, I am going to um, spotlight you for everyone. Thank you, Jason. Um, my, like Jason said, my name is Rochelle Roy and I supervise the WIC program here at ACAP. Um, the WIC program, or also known as Women, Infants, and Children, is a federal program that is administered here at ACAP. Um, our program is for pregnant breastfeeding, postpartum moms, and children from age birth to five. We are an income-based program. Um, however, our eligibility guidelines are set at 185% of the poverty um, guideline, which is quite high, and, and many working families um, are, are able to take advantage of our program as well. We also aren't just um, for families as defined as with moms and dads. We could possibly, um, we possibly serve foster parents, um, guardians, kinship um, placements, and um, great grandparents that are raising their, their grandchildren. So we certainly uh, provide a lot of services for the children um, in different family dynamic needs. Um, and what is WIC? Well, WIC is a nutrition and breastfeeding education program. Um, and we, what we do is provide nutrition um, assessments, uh, feeding tips, um, breastfeeding support. We monitor growth. We monitor development. Um, and then we provide monthly um, healthy food benefits. Um, this is all provided in a much easier, convenient way now um, than before the pandemic. Once the pandemic hit, we were in the midst of launching our um, eWIC process, which put everything right on a card, which makes shopping so much more convenient and um, easier for our families, more discreet. You don't have to worry about um, people um, no, you know, even knowing that you're taking advantage of the program, you go to the checkout, you slide your card and, and off you go. Um, plus you're able to purchase your items as you need them where that wasn't always the case before. And with the pandemic and foods 
sometimes being um, within a shortage or certain get it hard time getting certain foods, it's a good it's a good thing that we're able to have that flexibility. Um, our families starting um, during the pandemic were getting um, an allotted amount of fruits and vegetables. Well, this past summer, USDA um, they had trialed a process of every every mom and child getting $35 of fruits and vegetables, an additional $35 of fruits and vegetables per month. Well, they took a look at that data. That was for June, July, August, and September. And they now that October had hit, they went back and they reassessed it. And now they've gone ahead and added additional fruits and vegetables in. So they see the need of, of the healthy foods that are needed here in the community. Um, as far as breastfeeding support, we have uh, four lactation certified lactation counselors right here on staff. We are willing and able to help with whatever um, breastfeeding support or any issues you might have. So certainly come see us. With the WIC program, um, when what we do is we're an outreach program where we go to you. We are in six different communities across the county. And with the waiver or with the pandemic in happening, we have been, had we've had the opportunity i'm sorry to be able to provide a lot of telehealth um so when families couldn't come in or didn't have the transportation or were homesick we're able to do some of those appointments over the phone and go ahead and provide benefits and see them maybe the next time which has been a huge thing for our families having that flexibility so that's what the WIC has done WIC program has done for our programs are, are for our families. We also have other um, programs across ACAP. Um, we've been able to um, have community cupboards um, at different locations, which has been wonderful and accessed by many, many individuals and families across the county. Um, so you take what you need or leave, leave something if you'd like, something that's available for anyone. Um, we've also here at ACAP have the opportunity um, to provide um, the SNAP education program, which is the supplemental nutrition assistance program here. We provide nutrition education um, in both the Southern Aroostook, and I'm happy to say that we have hired on somebody for the Central Aroostook area. So these are direct education classes that people can take advantage of. They help with um, ways to increase fruits and vegetables in your diet. They, um, how can your family be more active? Um, making healthy choices, budgeting, those are all ways and things that anybody could take advantage of, quite frankly. It's its a time where, um, you know, it's a great thing to learn. So certainly we have many programs here at ACAP. So please reach out. We're here. Um, just give us a call and we can you can be connected to all these programs and uh, we'd love to help. Great, thank you so much, Rochelle. Before we move on um, to the next um, program, I, some of these questions are being answered, thank you, um, in the chat. But we have a question here for, um, for I think, Shannon. This would be best addressed to you. Uh, Virginia wants to know how long it takes to hear back once someone has applied for heating assistance, and how do we know if they have been cross-referenced to other programs? I was told I'd get a call back and haven't heard. So talk about that process if you would. Sure. So when an individual comes in for your appointment, the application is taken. Um, if it's an, a phone application, then at the end of that appointment, the intake worker is going to take all the documents that need, that require your signature and put it all together and send it to you in the mail. You then have up to 20 days to get all that documentation back to us in order for us to certify your file. <clears throat> and once all those documents are there and our certification team has been able to verify all that, then your file is considered certified. And then it is then forwarded to Maine Housing as complete. And Maine Housing will process a payment and forward that to the appropriate vendor um, this can take up to eight weeks um, in the guidelines. We do have up to eight weeks to, to do this, um, but typically I would say it happens more within four to six weeks. And certainly if there is an emergency, a no heat situation or a non-working furnace, 
um, we do have scheduled times where we can get that done even quicker in order to accommodate those situations. Great, Shannon. And the other part of that question was about the um, knowing how if they've been cross referenced for other programs. So I'm imagining that this was a heap contact and with the navigators that we are now having go back and work with customers who are qualifying for the home energy assistance program. Um, talk about the process that happens there and about how long after their heap initial appointment, they will get contacted by a navigator. Yep. So if they are not transferred to a navigator right at the completion of their appointment or if they're in person brought physically to the navigator, um, usually within a week, that navigator will reach out to them. They're provided a list of the appointments um, of the appointments the prior week of. So they will call. Um, so it usually takes about a week before you would hear from a navigator at most. Great, thank you, Shannon. And uh, Rochelle, I, I think Heidi's covered this. There was a question about WIC and whether WIC counted for a unit and that, that was in reference to the rental assistance program, but WIC is a completely separate program and you're not limited to just the 18 months or 18 units in WIC, are you? No, um, it's up to actually up to five years of age. Um, as long as you potentially continue to qualify. So I think I did see a question too, Jason, regarding uh, breast pumps. WIC, yes. does, WIC does provide hospital grade uh, breast pumps. We have a loaner program. So what we have are double pumps that we provide the pump, plus we provide the pump kits to go along with it. And we have a bunch of other um, breastfeeding support items that we provide our moms with as well. So please reach out. It's at no cost to you. And um, all we need is the pump back when you're done. Great. Thank you. Uh, continuing on sort of that theme of moms and dads, uh, one of the areas that we recognize that there's a huge need for, and we're working diligently to try to grow our own ability to serve more individuals, is in the need for affordable and convenient child care services. And so we're going to talk about those now, uh, and we're going to go to Megan Barnes, who is the Director of Programs for Early Care and Education Programs. So I will send it to you, Megan. Hello, everyone. Uh, ACAP Early Care and Education Centers are private child care programs that use the state of Maine's market rates as our fee structures. There are no income guidelines to qualify um, for child care slots across the county. Um, vouchers and child care subsidies are accepted as forms of payment as well as the private fees. So with vouchers and child care subsidies, uh, our staff works at the time of interest or when we get the application back. We work with families to complete the voucher application or the subsidies to um, mail into the um, child care or DHHS um, to support the families in securing um, additional funds to be able to um, access affordable child care. Our child care programs across the county are open from 6 a.m to 5.30 Monday through Friday. We offer quality childcare options for families in Presque Isle, Caribou, Holton, and most re recently, our Fort Kent Center, which will um, be scheduled to open on November 29th. ACAP has expanded childcare opportunities into Fort Kent um, based on the community need. Uh, we are currently preparing to open the infant toddler room, which um, allows us to um, support families in accessing additional eight slots because as infant and toddlers, um, which consist of zero to three years of age, uh, the maximum group size for childcare licensing is um, eight. So we are going to open um, those eight slots and this will serve um, infants and toddlers from six weeks of age to three years. ACAP is also in the process of opening an additional preschool duration room with wraparound child care services at our Prescott Gouldville Center. Um, we have a quite a lengthy wait list um, in the central area of the county. And we've made the determination that along with our educational opportunities and services that we provide, there's families still with the need of a longer day 
due to their own um, family needs. So we've um, determined that need to be best placed in our next venture to be in the Prescott area. Um, this will provide an additional 18 slots for children three years to six year, three to six years of age whose families may need to access that childcare service to extend that service day uh, for those families. ACAP provides quality education based for children um, six weeks to six years of age. The program is based on providing care, um, which is the primary reason that um, families come to us needing childcare is based on their schedules. But within that service, we provide a quality education experience that offers a developmental curriculum and is based to meet the individual needs and interests of each child enrolled. The program offers language rich and nurturing environments by certified trained staff for children and provides nutritious meals and snacks that are approved by the USDA meal guidance. Um, to apply for child care, a child care slot, interested parties can visit our website at www.acap-me.org and access the application to be placed on the wait list. Um, our enrollment specialist that's responsible for all child care enrollment will get in touch to support the fee process um, and determine the fee agreement based on the payer source. She will also provide information around availability of slots and other information that may need, may need to be provided by the family. Um, I do wanna mention that in our early care and education um, program, we also offer Head Start and Early Head Start services. Um, and there's been quite a bit of legislation to support continued expansion of universal pre-K um, to all four-year-olds, as well as childcare throughout the county. Um, ACAP continues to explore opportunities to expand um, on community needs, as well as partner with community agencies to provide quality childcare opportunities, as well as that universal pre-K uh, pre initiative. Um, this supports school readiness goals it also improves outcomes for ongoing school success for young children. Currently, we are in the process of expanding services by partnering with um, community school districts, as well as um, community, uh, other community agencies. Hopefully, this will allow us to put a small, small dent in the crisis around quality, affordable childcare, as well as extending those educational services to all four-year-olds in the county, because we know that that is where our priorities should lie, because that's our future. Thank you very much, Megan. We have a question that's been posted in the chat um, about our early care and education services, and it does ACAP help with childcare for children older than six years of age? Currently, we do not. Um, because of our license um, with DHHS, we are licensed to provide care from six weeks to six years of age. It is an area that we have explored, and we're currently actually in talks with a um, local family child care facility to see what we can do about those older school age kiddos. Um, so it's something that you may see more of in the future. Um, in the news or, or being advertised. Currently we don't, but it's not something that's out of the question. Thank you, Megan. Um, moving on next, we're going to move from child care services or early care and education services onto navigation and coaching services, which as um, was explained earlier by our COO, Jamie Chandler, a huge part of our effort here at the agency is to uh, really provide that comprehensive level of service for individuals. Um, and the person who's been really leading that charge for us uh, since we, we really uh, began to take it on uh, a few years ago or five years ago now is Heidi Ratcliffe, who's our other director of programs. And so Heidi, I'm going to pass it over to you to talk about our navigation and coaching services. 
Perfect. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Heidi Ratcliffe. I'm the director of programs here and super excited to be able to spend the next five minutes talking to you about a program or a couple of programs that are near and dear to my heart. Um, coaching is a, a service that we provide. We have many different layers of coaching. Um, and so eligibility really depends on a multitude of factors. Uh, it's an approach that we wanted to ensure that we were helping people through the process. As you know, um, social service systems can be incredibly overwhelming. And so with coaching and navigation, we were providing someone to not only connect them to these services within our organization, but also externally as well. Um, and so I'll explain the difference in navigation and coaching really briefly um, beyond what Jamie just spoke about and, and others previously. Uh, but navigation is really a touch point um, to be able to put in your income information and your household size and be able to say, these are all of the services and program within our organization that can help you. Um, after that, we connect you with those programs and services. We, we do that work. We send an email directly and then you can expect a response back from that individual. Um, right now, we have about five navigators covering the entire Aroostook County, um, and they're literally doing about 800 cases or phone calls to families um, in the run of a month. So we have 800 families reached out and offered navigation services. Um, and then we have coaching services, which is more in depth. We have A16 coaching, which really focuses on a high energy reduction for people. Um, so it's focusing on helping to teach people financial literacy. And as they complete each task, they get incentivized by a, a portion of that um, a payment going to their electricity bill or their heating source. And we provide them tips and tricks for how to keep their home um, energy and conserve energy safe and conserve as much energy as possible. And then we have whole family coaching, uh, which is really a, a service that we provide for individuals who are enrolled in our early Head Start and Head Start program. And we've been really successful in being able to show that if you're working simultaneously with the children enrolled, as well as the parents, you can help that entire household move from potentially crisis to thriving. And so our coaches work in depth, one on one, holding hands with the families, walking them through the stages of the services and programs it's assessments, it's goal creating, it's really that one-on-one -on -one assistance that's very intentional and an ongoing pro program and service. Um, right now we have about 239 households that are receiving coaches services all through Aroostook County. We have 10 coaches, um, which is amazing because 13 years ago it was one and we've we've moved from one to, to 15 between our navigation and coaches services together. Um, so I think that's basically what I wanted to share with you. Eligibility uh, for, for straight coaching is typically under 200% of poverty. So again, it's an income eligible program, but we also provide straight coaching for any individual that wants that level of services that does not meet the eligibility requirement for the other programs that are specific. So we have the ability to provide this service to everybody in Aroostook County who has the need and the want. Um, we just have to stick them in the right funding source to be able to do that. So thank you for letting me share coaching and navigation with you. Great, thank you, Heidi. Um, we, uh, in a related service that we are now going to move on to, uh, we've been ex expanding greatly over the last few years, our work uh, with individuals experiencing homelessness for those who are housing insecure, including the establishment of a day center here in Presque Isle, uh, to serve both residents of uh, homeless services of Aroostook Sister Mary O'Donnell Shelter, but also other individuals uh, who uh, just need to use the facility, need a warm place to be during the day, or want to be in a place that can connect them with technology uh, and help them find housing and employment. And so related to that and overseeing that space and our coaching team um, under Heidi um, is Jeannie Fox. And so Jeannie, we're going to uh, move over to you. I'm looking at it, I'm like, why isn't it working? Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jeannie Fox. I am the program manager here at the Hope and Prosperity um, Wellness Center, um, or Resource Center, I'm sorry. Um, and yes, we um, we are here located at One Edgemont Drive. Um, we opened a little over two years ago at our 771 Main Street. And as Jason just mentioned, we were we opened up to, um, to give our homeless population a place to come during the day. Um, when they were asked to leave the um, homeless shelter of Aroostook. Um, and when they're with us, they're able to work with um, our coaches, our navigators. They're able to work on job search or if they are in need of, they're looking for a place to live. 
if um, they may have a need for um, to get their driver's license or main ID. They also may need food stamps or main care. And those are all services that we're able to offer them. Um, they, they come in, they meet with a coach, um, they do a little chit chat. Hey, what can we do for you today? Um, and it's working very well. Um, it's exciting. Today we had a um, one of our coworkers from our main office uh, made a big um, container of shepherd's pie and a dessert as well. And she'd let us know that they were, she was bringing it over. And boy, we had some happy residents here today. They were um, very happy with that. Um, and and that's, the, that's the goal here. We want them to come. We want them to feel safe. We also want them to feel heard. We want to, to have that conversation with them and find out what their needs are. And we're gonna work with them to help them have a better, um, a better life or help them where they want to go. A lot of the coaches, um, one of the philosophy for coaches is the client is in the driver's seat. We don't meet with somebody and say, oh, well, you need to work on this, this, and that. We meet with them and we ask them, what do you want to work with? How can we help you today? So, um, and I am saying a lot about the residents from HSA, but we're open to anybody in the community that needs to meet with somebody. Um, they may need help with filling out an application. They may need, they may need help with doing a social security um, form, or they may just have a few questions that they've received a letter from DHHS and they're not quite sure what that means. And we are here to um, help. We, um, it's, it's awesome. Our program has grown leaps and bounds. Um, and it's just a wonderful feeling to know that at the end of the day that we have helped somebody. Um, so that's what happens here at the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center at One Edgemont Drive. Please tell everybody that you see that may need anything. Please give us a call or stop in and visit. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Thank you very much, Jeannie. Um, again, I'm just going to check here. Okay, we don't have any new questions for you or for anyone at this point. But again, if you do have any, uh, please feel free to drop them in the chat at any point. Uh, we're going to move from uh, services that the agency offers for individuals experiencing homelessness. But before we do that, I'm going to just ask Teresa Dow to add one quick um, addition to that. And that's our, our soon to come increased services for youth experiencing homelessness. Teresa. <laughs> Hi, yes, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Teresa Dow and I'm the Director of Programs here at ACAP. Um, not Director of Programs, I'm sorry, Program Coordinator for our Housing Stability um, Division or Section. So um, in the upcoming months, we're going to be starting a new program here at ACAP called the Youth Homeless Demonstration Project. And this is going to be a program that has two components. Um, the first is going to be um, it's, a, it's a piece that's referred to as mobile diversion. So going out in the community and making those connections with youth that are experiencing homelessness between the ages of 16 and 24. Um, these are um, kind of smaller services, but important ones nonetheless. So maybe helping them um, with meeting a, an emergent need like clothing um, or food, things of that nature, maybe connecting them to services. And then the other piece that we're gonna be doing is um, something around transitional housing and rapid rehousing. This is a different program. The age demographic is a little bit different. It's between the ages of 18 to 24. So looking to um, find and serve youth that are experiencing homelessness, not only in Aroostook County, but also Washington County to hopefully be able to place them um, relatively quickly, even though we are experiencing a, a housing shortage across the state um, into safe and stable housing. This is gonna be completely driven by the youth. So kind of along the same things that Jeannie had mentioned, um, when they come in and they meet with us, if they have goals that they're wanting to work on and to, to direction that they wanna go in um, and goals they wanna to move towards, whether it could be obtaining and completing high school, um, maybe working towards their high set, which used to be referred to as um, it's a little bit different, but the GED, um, maybe attending college, just finding employment. Um, those are all things that we're going to be working on with them. Um, and again, with the youth in the driver's seat. So this could also mean that we're able to assist with completing important referrals um, for mental health counseling, uh, helping them maybe apply for main care eligibility, 
um, or in some instances, pot potentially also substance misuse um, treatment. So we're very excited to be able to um, kind of dive into um, a little bit newer of an arena as far as the, the um, rapid rehousing and transitional housing piece. Uh, but we're very excited for this program to hopefully roll out in early January to start serving youth um, so that we can really start making an impact on those that are, are experiencing homelessness within our communities. So thank you, Jason. Thank you very much, Teresa. We're now going to move on to programs for individuals who are looking for employment. And we have a number of those. Uh, and Kathy Williams leads those programs for us here at ACAP. And she's going to lead the next part of our presentation. Hi, so I am Kathy Williams, and I am the program supervisor for workforce development here at ACAP. Um, our goal is to work with people who are unemployed, who are looking for education, looking for employment, um, whatever that may be. We work with adults, we work with youth. Um, we have a few different programs, um, and they are income based for the most part. Um, our goal is to help them identify what their career path might be that again that might be employment it might be it might be schooling um, to help them attain their secondary some secondary credentials um, that will help them overcome barriers to employment and increase their earning potential um, we can link them on to uh, training opportunities um, along with that comes a, a lot of wraparound services that we can provide um, some of them being childcare and travel, because I mean, if you're unemployed and you're going to school or you're just looking for work, those things, um, you probably don't have the funding to do that. Um, some people come to us and all they really want to do is they want help finding a job, um, but they don't have clothing to go on job interviews. Um, we can do some of that. Um, and there's, there's just a, a long list of um, support services, wraparound services that we can provide. Um, and I, I always say to a customer, always ask. I mean, you can, we can only say no, you know, um, but it doesn't hurt to ask because nine times out of 10, the answer is going to be yes. Um, the programs that we actually work with um, are low-income adults. Um, we work with youth ages 16 to 24. Uh, we work with veterans. We work with people who have been dislocated from their jobs. They've been laid off due to no fault of their own. The business might have closed or just downsized. Um, and, and we try to, you know, say to them, don't screen yourself out. Let us, let us do the screening process to see if you're eligible and what programs you are eligible for. Um, we also have a program um, right now that's um, for long-term unemployed people who have been affected either directly or indirectly by the opioid crisis. And that program provides the same services as all of our other programs do. It provides training, it provides um, job search, it provides all the support services that all of our, the rest of our programs um, can provide. And we're here to meet you where you're at. We want, to, we want to help you with whatever decision it is that you've decided is what, what you want to do and right for you. We want to make sure that you're on that right path for success and not failure. So we do a lot of assessment, um, interests. What are your interests? And make sure that the interests that you, you know, you want to be a nurse. You say you want to go to school to be a nurse. Are your interests, do the interests that you have align with that kind of, that kind of position? So we do some interests, um, inventories. We, we do some CASAS testing to make sure, which is, you're reading and math levels to make sure that you could be successful if you're looking at going to college. Um, we're here to listen to whatever plans you have and help you navigate through those um, and support you throughout the involvement of our program. Um, some of the things that I, I would, you know, we look at also are, you know, what are your skills and abilities? You know, what is your work history? Um, you know, maybe we can provide you with a work experience. Maybe you've not worked in a very, very long time and you don't have any skills. And this, especially with, with our youth population. Um, so we try to work with some of our local employers um, and the employer would provide them a place to go to work. And we, ACAP, through our workforce development program would pay their wage for a certain period of time so that they can gain some skills. And also they're, they're gonna gain somebody that's gonna be a reference for them through this work experience. We also have an on-the-job training program. So that's a, an employer hires you first and we reimburse the employer 50% um, of the wage 
up to a, a period of time, depending on what the skills are that they'll be learning. So that's a benefit to the employer, but it's also a carrot for our participants to say to this employer, hey, I'm working with ACAP, um, and they can do this on-the-job training, which is a benefit to the employer. Um, so those are some of the things that we do through workforce development. Um, when you meet with us, you have a counselor who is, what, you work one-on-one -on -one with them, um, and just trying to meet the, meet the needs of what, what it is that you want to do and, and how you want to proceed. Um, we serve everybody in Aristotle County. Um, so we're here to help um, and just give us a call. Great, thank you, Kathy. A couple of things that I heard in there that I just wanna tease out for people um, and that's that there's services available for both those who are looking to connect into the workforce, but also for employers. So employers should look to connect with us as well. And I know that you've said this before, but not necessarily specifically in this presentation, that people shouldn't rule themselves out before they call and they connect with you because there are different programs and different opportunities and, and income and doesn't always uh, disqualify somebody such as in the opioid program. Exactly. Income is not always the, the, the factor that makes you eligible. It could be many different things. Um, simply you could be, you could get food stamps or you could be basic skills deficient and adult, you know, we have a lot of adults who say, well, I'm not basic skills deficient. I'm not stupid. And we're not saying you're stupid, but if you haven't been in school in a long time and you take a math test, um, you might, you might test a lot lower than you think. And so if you're basic skills deficient in math, that's going to automatically qualify you for our adult program. Um, and you might not, you might, again, might not think that you are, and um, you possibly could be. So Again, let us do that screening for you. Um, so certainly, you know, just ask. I know that I am, and so does our CFO. So I'll just put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will. Uh, there is a question in the uh, po posted question uh, for you here, and I don't know that I, that we've been asked this one before. Maybe you have, and I haven't heard it. But uh, somebody wants to know if there are any programs coming up that will work with people that have been terminated due to declining to be vaccinated. Well, so, I mean, we have, no, we have not, I mean, I, we don't have a program specific for that, um, but if they've been terminated, if they've been terminated, they're not technically a dislocated worker. A dislocated worker, again, has to lose the, their job by no fault, no fault of their own and, and generally would be able to collect unemployment. Now, having said that, if somebody, if, I, I don't know how unemployment's gonna look at that because of the COVID and not being, not getting um, the vaccine and so they were let go. Um, I don't know how that's gonna qualify. But again, having said that, there could be other factors that are gonna make you eligible. Again, I mean, I, I, I'm, I have a four-year degree in accounting, but I bet if I had to take that math test right now, I might not be able to do the trigonometry part of it, which is gonna you know, bring my score down, my grade down. So it could be that. It could be that now that you've lost your job, you've applied for food stamps and gotten food stamps. That's gonna make you eligible. So um, there might be a way that they'll fit into one of the programs that we have. So, so again, again I, always ask. Right, Re reach out and it, it, it's almost uh, very specific to individuals and individual circumstances. And yes. Kathy in workforce development or other programs will work with you to see uh, what, like for example, we were talking about home energy assistance program earlier. Um, if you don't quite make the income qualification guidelines, they can work with you about deducting medical expenses and seeing how close you might get. So don't rule yourself out, uh, contact us and, and see what we can do and find out with you. Great, thank you, Kathy. Um, we're gonna move on now to um, a program that's also very timely and that's uh, as it relates to helping individuals to access health insurance through the open marketplace as it is open enrollment period. And one of ACAP's newer team members uh, who actually came over to us from healthcare, uh, so is well-versed on all things healthcare related, that's Andrea White. And we're going to go now to Andrea to talk about our affordable health insurance navigation services. All things uh, healthcare related, but I can certainly find out if I don't know the answer. Um, so, as Jason said, I'm Andrea White, and I am e um, an assister for the new CoverMe.gov platform, which is sort of uh, 
created for Mainers specifically. So it's a wonderful program. Healthcare.gov or Obamacare, as a lot of you know it as, um, was created, but we have taken a lot of those same qualities as healthcare.gov, but we've actually made it more specific to Mainers. So if you're a Mainer, you may not want or need the same coverage as somebody in California. It's not really fair to compare the two. So this is a very main specific type of a program. Um, and you basically get to go on, you can go on to coverme.gov and you can start comparing health insurance plans and they all provide quality comprehensive coverage. So the difference is now is that you can use a lot of those tax credits that you normally get in the form of a tax refund in the spring when you file your taxes. The government is now allowing you to use those tax credits if you qualify based on your income towards the premiums that you're paying for your health insurance. So you can get very low cost plans or you might be able to get a plan you know, that you never thought you could afford before. And there's actually a lot of plans. We, we work with the big three. We work with uh, community health options, Blue Cross, Blue Shield Anthem, and Harvard P Pilgrim. So when you go on to coverme.gov, you start by answering a bunch of questions. You know, your zip code, for, for example. That's very important, uh, different healthcare plans, work differently in different zip codes. So that's important. Then they're gonna ask you your household income. They're going to ask you who your physician is, who your doctors are. You can put up to six in there. So if you have specialists and you have a primary care provider and you have all of these other things, you can put them in. Then that way they'll be able to tell you, well, these providers are covered with these plans. The next big question is your medications. And you can, you can put in up to 10 medications in there and you can follow, find the plans that cover those medications. And some of them might be a, a, a tier one or a tier two or a tier three, which means you might pay different uh, for this medication on this plan, might be a little bit more with this plan, but essentially your premiums might be lower, but your deductible might be higher. So when you're allowed, when, when you're shopping for your plans and you're comparing and you can actually do a beautiful side-by-side -side comparison. It's very apples to apples. And you can look and say, well, this one has a lower premium, but it's got a much higher deductible. Or, and then you kind of scroll down a little bit and you say, well, this one has a much higher, pre or not a much higher premium, but a higher premium, but a lot lower deductible, which a dedu deductible means is what you have to pay out of pocket before that health insurance plan even kicks in. But what, what the other good thing about it, though, is that there's a lot of plans that cover a lot of preventative care, free mammograms, free physicals, free, you know, that sort of preventative care, sometimes even some free mental health visits as well. And that's a very important thing to look at today if that's where you're at. Um, the other good thing is that they're actually covering pregnant women now. Healthcare.gov did not cover pregnant women. Only once you had your baby, then they would cover you and your baby. But now if you're a pregnant woman, you can get all kinds of, of services. So it's a matter of getting on to coverme.gov, comparing the plans. If you have questions, you're certainly welcome to give me a call. My personal number here at ACAP is 554-4150. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. But if you do want me to sit down with you very specifically and go through the plan and help you set it up, that is something that we do by appointment only. And we can come together and, and figure out an appointment date and time that works best for both of us. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was that if you want your coverage to start January 1st, then you need to register, you need to find a plan and get enrolled by December 15th. After December 15th, so December 16th, for example, then you're actually not going to be covered until February 1st. So it's important to kind of get on that right now. And if you have um, very specific questions and it, it might be later in the day and you can't get a hold of me, there's a 1-800 number 
right there that you can call. There's a chat feature that as soon like when you're on looking at those plans, there's a little green box in the bottom right hand corner where you can start a chat with a qualified person. So there's ways for you to get help in real time uh, if you need it. But I do encourage folks to get on there, play around, put in your data, put in your income, put in all of that. It's actually pretty easy. Compare the plans. And if you have questions, give me a call. And just a couple of things to add to that, Andrea, open enrollment is now through or was November 1st through January 15th? Correct. Yeah. And then the other thing of note is that if that program, the information that you enter in that program leads to or their work with you leads to what looks like they may be qualified for main care, then that process can sort of begin in that platform as well, correct? Exactly. Thank you for bringing that up. I knew there was something I'd forgotten. So there is actually a really great thing that they're doing now that if you when you put in your income and all of your information, the magical algorithms that work behind the scenes may tell you that you are your main care eligible. And in that, if that's the case, then you just, you continue doing what you're doing on that platform and it sends it automatically to main care and you don't need to reapply at main care. You don't need to do any of that stuff all over again. The information that you put in gets automatically funneled to main care and then they take care of the rest from there. So it's, it's pretty easy. And I was actually pleasantly surprised when I was getting in there trying to play around with it. And I thought, gosh, if I can do it, most people could probably do it too, but I'm here to answer any questions for you. That 1-800 number that's right there on the screen, there's that chat feature, um, and we can certainly give you as much help as, as we can. If I don't know the answer, I have resources I can find out for you, so we'll, we'll always be there for you to help. Great. Thanks, Andrea. And from open enrollment season shortly thereafter, we are going to move to tax season. Um, and that has a special implications um, at this time because of the additional earned income tax credits and other incentives. So we want to make sure we let folks know, especially folks um, who in, in low and moderate income categories in Aroostook County, how they can get assistance with their taxes. And to do that, um, our Director of Advancement, Sherry Locke, who's a partner uh, and our representative with the Aroostook Cash Coalition is going to talk about uh, those services. Sherry? Absolutely. Thank you, Jason. Tax time can be very stressful for individuals and families, but it can also be a time of year that allows you to reflect on your finances and, and put the income that you do have um, to work for you and your family. So ACAP is very proud to be a partner uh, in the Aroostook Cash Coalition, which is led by the United Way of Aroostook. Um, it also includes members um, such as Hope and Justice and New Ventures, Maine, but really important that this program offers um, two components, free tax services um, for individuals who uh, meet the income guidelines, which are very generous for this program, um, but then also connects filers to uh, an opportunity guide to connect to resources in the community. So after the, the tax piece is done, the opportunity guide works with the, the filer to talk about resources that are available to, and to make those connections in the community. So if during that session, um, the filer has um, shared that they have a challenging time paying for fuel, you know, winters are challenging, you know, maybe the resources are home energy assistance program here at ACAP, but it really is about taking a look at um, individual and household um, income for the year, making sure those taxes are filed. Um, as we all know, this year, especially the earned income tax credit for families with children under 18, that information and those uh, benefits were sent out based on past filing. So very, very important uh, moving forward um, that anyone who has earned income especially is filing, but really everyone is filing. There are um, programs and rebates available for, uh, for many of in our community, including um, our, the seniors in our community. So we would encourage um, anyone who needs help doing their taxes to reach out to the Arista Cash Coalition. We're working now um, on um, what that process will look like. The, the program starts in early February. So information should be released in the next couple of weeks about how to make those appointments. We're working on a hybrid model, which will include um, virtual appointments in a scan and ghost or you know, real in-person sessions, um, just want to make it as accessible to the entire community as possible. But again, it's a, a free program to help with the, the tax piece, but then there's, you know, more to the program, including connecting to resources. Many folks are hearing about the advanced payment on the earned income tax credit. 
Again, that is for uh, individuals who have children under the age of 18 and you had to have filed your taxes to receive this benefit or there's another process that you can go through. So as we get into this new season, um, just a very, very friendly reminder to if you need help with those taxes to schedule an appointment, the appointments are free and it will really connect you um, and make sure that you're eligible for all of those other um, you know, things like the earned income tax credit, the property fairness tax credit um, that are directly related to filing income tax. So really, really important. Um, the Aroostook Cash Coalition saw, serves all of Aroostook County. So again, important to know that there are income guidelines on the program, but the guidelines are, are very high, higher than most of the programs that we serve um, and are available for individuals, for families, really for anyone in the community that meets those income guidelines. So be on the lookout in the next couple weeks for what those income guidelines are, how you can sign up, um, and you know where those services will be held either in person or virtually. So a lot more information in the next couple weeks, but just make sure it's on your radar. Um, and we really wanna serve as many folks as possible this upcoming year. Sherry, we do have a question related to the tax filing assistance program. And that is, um, is that included as a referral or in the referral process in our comprehensive service delivery that Jamie was talking about in the navigation piece? So I will say that we are working, we are working on how to include that. We really feel that this program is of value. So we are working on what that may look like. Um, our navigators may be doing the outward calls after the tax program. Um, and yes, we will be getting that information out and our team will be able to make the referrals, um, but they'll also be able to receive um, the referrals. When that information is available, it will be posted on the ACAP Facebook page, as well as in our weekly newsletter. So if you'd like to receive that weekly newsletter, you can just put your email address in the chat box and we'll make sure to add you to that. Um, that newsletter, again, is electronic and does vote weekly and does include um, our most current information. Um, we also update our Facebook page um, very, very regularly with new programs, and we would certainly, once that information is defined, we would be sharing it there as well. Just a couple of things to that um, for the person who asked this question. The tax prep program is only available a limited time of year. Um, so we referring individuals to it now, there's not a resource for it. The other component is, is that it's not a program that our, our team leads in terms of the, the tax preparation part. So we don't schedule the appointments, for example, uh, for this program, although we're going to be assisting that a little bit more. But it is a program that we're going to be doing after uh, the tax tax papers are filed or tax documents are filed, we will be doing that comprehensive assessment with people who apply for that program. So we're just, we're, it, we're in a new phase and a new phase of the partnership on that program this coming year where we're taking on more responsibility. Um, and as I think we continue to um, integrate that work with the work of our agency, hopefully that we will be able to um, do more navigation to that program from our programs directly. So. Thank you very much for that question. Um, Sherry, there are a couple of other things that you were gonna cover quickly about resources that are available in an urgent matter, matter for individuals. Yes, just wanna uh, remind everyone about the community closet, which is located at the ACAP office next to Walmart. So our 771 uh, Main Street office in Presque Isle. It is um, underneath our portico. So it is semi-permanent structure that keeps the clothing protected. Um, but that program is, um, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year through the generosity of folks in our community. So you can uh, drop off donations or you can shop at no charge in the closet. Um, we serve hundreds of individuals um, in that closet each and every week. There are no income guidelines for that. Again, it is a kind of a give what you can, take what you need. Um, program and it works out really, really well. Um, we have uh, ACAP team members and volunteers that help to kind of keep that closet organized and clothing hung up. Um, but it really is a, a very valuable resource here in University County. So if you have clothing to donate, um, you can donate um, Monday through Friday from eight to five. Um, if you want to bring it inside, if you're, if you want to just leave it outside, it can be again, any hours um, that you're in that area, you can drop those clothing off, but it makes such a big difference for so many in our community. So um, just a reminder that that is available. And again, there are no income guidelines. So if you are in need of clothing, um, especially winter clothing, we do um, a big ask and ask folks to drop off winter coats and boots and snow pants. 
So if that's something that you need, I would certainly recommend that you check the closet to see if it can help fill your needs. Um, for anyone here that does service or provides direct service to clients, if you know of a client looking, please spread the word. Or if you see something that would fit one of your clients, you are certainly encouraged to, to take that and get that to them. Um, but really that closet is available and I'm really excited that we're able to continue to offer that um, all day and all year throughout the year. Great, thank you, Sherry. Uh, the program program sector that we're gonna move on to next are our housing programs. Um, and we're gonna speak specifically about some of the assistance programs around weatherization and uh, Im improvements to heating systems, as well as home repairs. Um, and the man who just loves to speak publicly about his programs, Randy Rattray is going to present next. So Randy, I will uh, move it over to you. Thank you, Jason. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so today I want to give, just give a quick overview of the programs our housing team has to offer our customers throughout Aroostook. Um, earlier, uh, Shannon spoke about the Home Energy Assistance Program and the application process uh, for that program. Um, that application is also a gateway to many of our housing programs. Um, for instance, um, these programs include the Weatherization Program, the Central Heating Improvement Program, our above ground storage tank replacement program and our heat pump program. Our weatherization program is, is intended to reduce fuel consumption in homes that receive um, the heat program. Um, all eligible heat applications are ranked on a point scale, which makes up our WAP rank weatherization waiting list. Um, this weatherization WAP rank is based upon family makeup, a poverty level of the family, and the energy cost burden of the home. Uh, households with an elderly handicap or child six years of age or younger are given priority for the program. And the work that we complete on homes are normally um, reducing air infiltration into the home, um, increasing insulation levels in the attic uh, walls um, and basement walls, weather stripping doors, rebuilding attic hatches, uh, basement bulkhead doors, we also do some health and safety measures, uh, such as exhaust fans, uh, smoke alarm installations, carbon monoxide uh, detectors. And we also provide a uh, heating system clean tune up and evaluation if the home hasn't had one in the previous year. Um, the next program is the Central Heating Improvement Program, uh, which is basically designed to provide safe and efficient heating systems to heat eligible households. The work that can be completed under this program um, is anything from a basic no heat service call uh, to replacing a complete non-working or unsafe heating system. Um, all the work for this program is contracted out to uh, firms within Aroostook that have uh, licensed heating system technicians. The above ground storage tank program is intended to replace residential fuel tanks also in heap eligible homes. Um, existing tanks must be old, rusty, in danger of leaking, tipping over um, to qualify for the program. Residents with the private well receive priority over others. Um, the above bound storage tank replacement program is funded by the State of Maine Department of Energy, Department of Environmental Protection. And we also have the heat pump program um, that will install new heat pumps uh, in owner-occupied single-family households that receive the heat program. Uh, heat pumps are installed um, to be a supplemental heat source only, um, and they're installed to help reduce fuel consumption for households um, that are eligible for the heat program. This program was new a little over a year ago in response to Governor Mills' initiative to install 100,000 heat pumps um, in the state of Maine over five years. In addition to these programs, we have a couple of uh, home repair programs. Uh, there's two separate programs, the Home Accessibility and Repair Program funded with state funds through Maine Housing and our Home Repair Network Program funded, federally funded through the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development. Both programs have very similar guidelines um, and we work off the same wait list. But to be eligible for the pro program, you must have owned your home for a year and have income at or below 80% of the area medium income established by HUD annually. Income 
eligible applications are then scored um, on our wait list and given priorities. These priorities are based on income, uh, liquid assets of a homeowners, age of household members, health and safety threats to the household, and the need for assistive services. Each category is assigned a weighted score and the higher scored projects are done first. The goal of our home repair programs is to provide warm, safe, and dry housing. Uh, work normally consists of repairs or replacement of roofing, uh, septic systems, wells, unsafe electrical um, entrance steps, ramps, or any other items that pose an immediate threat to the safety um, of somebody in the household. If you'd like an application uh, for one of our home repair programs or would like to be added to our heat pump wait list, uh, feel free to give us a call here at the ACAP Housing Office at 768-3023. Uh, um, we also have an email address that you can reach out to, housing at acap-me.org. Uh, and I believe there are also links on the ACAP website uh, to reach our programs. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free. Thank you. Yes, much appreciated, Randy. And certainly we're giving you various phone numbers for individual areas within the agency, but certainly the 764-3721 uh, number uh, will help you access any and all programs and uh, locations here at ACAP. Um, so, and yes, uh, the question was asked that, that, that there's a referral on this one as well. Yes, that actually um, sort of automatically happens with a number of the housing programs. Um, because if you apply for the home energy assistance program and you are eligible for the home energy assistance program, uh, you are automatically on the weatherization list. But that is, again, uh, just to underscore what Randy said, prioritized by um, the, uh, the sort of the various factors within your home energy uh, usage, the vulnerability of the folks in your home uh, around age and family category, things of that nature. So that does change. We do about 60 of them a year in Aroostook County, both our crew and partners. So, um, so yes, in this particular program, the housing programs are definitely referred by home energy assistance program because that's the gateway to be able to be eligible for those programs. Um, so thank you, Randy. Uh, our last program that we wanted to cover with you is a, another pandemic um, era related program uh, and very um, topical at this time. And that's the quarantine social support services that we provide um, to individuals here in Aroostook County right now, individuals who are asked to quarantine or isolate. Uh, and so Teresa Dow oversees that program for us. So we'll go back to you, Teresa. Thank you, Jason. So uh, yes, one of the additional programs that I oversee is our quarantine um, social support contract. This is a program that was put into place to help individuals or families safely isolate or quarantine if they've been exposed or tested positive to COVID-19. There are many different ways that we're able to help um, in that kind of situation. Um, some of the ways that we have helped, for instance, are um, completing a grocery shop. This could mean that um, our family coaches or navigators go out and um, go, to, go to one of the local uh, merchants, uh, Walmart, some of the IGAs, Shop and Save, um, what is that, whatever is in the neighborhood um, or in the area and complete a grocery shop for the family. So getting those necessities to be able to keep you safe during your quarantine time. We're also able to assist with purchasing cleaning supplies um, such as disinfectant wipes or sprays um, to help clean down surfaces within your home um, to kill any bacteria or germs that might be present. We've been able to assist some with fuel oil for those that have been impacted um, due to isolating or quarantining, um, especially with the weather getting cold. It's nice to have that little, um, the little, um, to provide that assistance. Um, so we've recently um, been asked to assist with some medical supplies as well, um, such as Tylenol, thermometers, O2 meters, um, that some physicians are asking those that have tested positive to use to track what their, their oxygen level is. Um, so all of those things are important and a necessity to make sure that you're, you're able to safely isolate and quarantine. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty simple process, but um, can be 
a little bit time consuming, up to 10 to 15 minutes to do a referral. So Jason does have the link on the screen for you to be able to go to the main.gov site to complete the COVID referral that would go to the Department of Health and Human Services. You could also contact the agency and um, be connected to me uh, and I can assist you with that process as well. So we do have to ask some questions um, around if any individuals in your household are vaccinated or not. Um, those questions are simply asked because it could mean that quarantine time might be a little bit different for you and your family. Um, we ask when, when you were first exposed. Um, we also talk to you to find out what kind of symptoms that you might have. Um, if you've tested, if anyone in your family has tested positive or who might be the one that um, was exposed and has been asked to quarantine. Um, I can also help assist you with getting some information around testing. So I've helped individuals register at Walgreens, for instance, to go in and do their free tests through the drive-through. Um, and most recently I've helped coordinate and connect some individuals to local walk-in clinics to be able to complete a PCR test. Um, so one of, the, one of the big things that I also think that this program really does provide is just some emotional support. Um, it could be, um, you know, you have a family of four and that quarantine time could be extended due to um, different reasons. And maybe you're just having some struggles with having to be in your home for so long or, or you're facing some fears. Um, we can help be an ear to listen and we can also connect you to some services that are available um, through this program as well. So again, if anyone that you know has been impacted um, and asked to quarantine or isolate due to being exposed or testing positive to COVID-19, please feel free to reach out to ACAP um, to see what kind of assistance might be available to you. And I also wanna stress that this is a statewide program. So if you have a family member who might be living in the Lewiston area down in Androscoggin County, um, or somebody who might be in the mid-coast area like Bath at Sag in Sagadahawk. There are community action agencies that are able to assist with the same program and meet the same needs that ACAP does. So if you have somebody that may not have access to the internet, but you do because you have a smartphone, um, as long as you have their verbal consent to complete the form, um, you're more than able to help get them connected to important resources to be able to safely isolate and quarantine. Great, thank you. you You're welcome. Thank you, Teresa Dowell Leary. Um, and that uh, wraps up the programs that we wanted to present to you today. As I noted at the beginning, um, there are many other programs here within the agency, uh, most notably our prevention programs that we did not cover today. Um, and a lot more uh, information and details accessible to you both online and certainly by reaching out and calling us. Uh, we do have a, a few minutes if folks uh, have questions that they want to ask that they've sort of held and would like to give voice to at this point. So if anybody has a question, I would encourage them to unmute and go ahead and ask that question of any of our team members who are gathered here today. All right, then if there aren't any, or if you have some that you would like to sort of follow up with us on, you can certainly uh, email or give us a call. The information's uh, there on your screen, info at acap-me.org. Uh, it goes to a general box, and generally that's picked up by our, um, our advancement team, and they'll forward that along to the appropriate person. And 764-3721, you can also, uh, please do, uh, friend us, if you will, on Facebook um, and follow us uh, if you have Twitter uh, there as well uh, for regular updates. There's a lot of really good information that our team puts out on social media and uh, would love to have you uh, stay in touch that way. As Sherry also noted, if you'd like to put in the chat your email address, if you do not receive our ACAP weekly bulletin, which has regular updates and information on these programs and many others uh, that we haven't shared with you today, please do so. Uh, and again, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today uh, for this ACAP community information session. I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Thank you, everyone.